Hey gang, it's Delta from DeltiasGaming.com. In this video, I want to talk about resource management. I'm taking on a bunch of mobs in Upper Craglorn with my VR4 Templar, showing just how this powerful resource management is and surviving goes hand in hand. This video is going to be the basics of resource regeneration, how to manage resources and where they even come from in the first place. That way you guys can have more reliable builds that you understand exactly how it is to manage resources, staying alive, doing damage, or healing. Let's get started. It's been a while since I've broken out a good old graph, but I think this one has a lot of importance into teaching folks about resource management. Champion points, armor consumables, but in the middle, the most important thing, in my opinion, is class and race. Let me show you an example of my sorcerer who is a Bosmer with one of the most overpowered passives for medium armor slash stamina users and just how impactful for this is on a build. Most important is race and getting a class that matches up well with what you want to do. Here's an example. If you look at my sorcerer, who's a wood elf, a Bosmer, they have a stamina passive called Yifri's Endurance. It increases damage regeneration when in combat. With three points of this, at level 30, you get 21%. That is an enormous benefit. An enormous. For, so for people that tell you race does not matter, they are completely living in a fantasy world. This thing matters very, very much. So what I like to do is, before you design a character, think about the end. What do you want to do? Do you want to do damage with a bow? Do you want to be a staff wielder? Because picking a Breton as a staff wielder is a good combo. Picking a, a Nightblade Bosmer with class and race passives is a great, great idea. If you do get to endgame, these will be really, really impactful. At level 15, you don't really see it. Later on in the game, you do. Another thing you want to research before rolling your character is exactly what kind of passives and active abilities do I have that can affect my resource generation. For instance, I picked a Bosmer Sorcerer, which is a really odd choice in most people's eyes. However, I have Dark Exchange, which can morph into a channeled ability giving me stamina and health back at the cost of magic. And there's also some interesting passives in here that um, reduce all, let's see, reduces all magic and stamina cost by 5%. There's also some other lowering um, ultimate cost abilities and passives. There's also some active abilities, Surge, that gives you major weapon brutality and heals you for crit, so I don't have to rely on magic at all. Thus, making this ability exchange vitally important to my build. So I thought really far out into the end on a, a Bosmer Sorcerer. That's how I'm going to get so much magic. And, and stamina is by channeling my magic through stamina and not having a problem with resources whatsoever. So before you pick something, two things you need to do. Pick your class and race for what you want to do at endgame. If you don't know, take a race and a class that's good at everything. Imperial Templar. Um you know, a Dunmer Dragon Knight, uh, something like that that has a couple different things. So if you get to endgame, you're not totally hosed. Look at the Nord, for example. They have no resource generation besides health recovery. Terrible, terrible pick. If you did a Bosmer Nightblade, you have a 30% baseline stamina recovery and the Nightblade passive. You have a 21% via the passives in your race as a Bosmer. And then if you went Werewolf, stack another 15% on top of that. This is how you build that ultimate character that can just dodge roll for days. Same thing can be applied with Magic. High Elf, Sorcerer, something like that. These are the power combos. So I think I've made my point about races and classes. So let's move on to Armor. Okay, there's a couple things about armor that's really important to know. What you wear really determines your resource management. For instance, if you go on the armor passives here in your skills, there's a couple of particular passives tied to resource regeneration. Evocation and light armor reduce cost, recovery increases your recovery, and then medium has its own called Windwalker. It's only stamina recovery and reduced cost all in one, which is great. Also, Heavy does have one, 
which is it gives you back a little bit of resources every time you get hit, depending on how many pieces of heavy you're wearing. So the bonuses scale off how much heavy you are wearing, light, medium, whatever. So let's take a look at my baseline stats here in my character screen. So magic recovery, stamina recovery, roughly around a thousand for both. Not that impressive, right? So let's say we want to have more magic recovery. It sounds simple, but just watch. So we go all light armor. Bumps it up to 1200. Notice my stamina recovery stayed the same. Why? Because the things that are tied to my stamina are also tied to nothing to do with my armor via champion points and other things. So just know that your stat regeneration, how your regeneration works is based usually upon the number of pieces of armor that you wear. Because if you read these passives, it's based on the bonus. You want to wear at least five of your main stat armor. Trust me, five is really good. There's also a passive in Undaunted here that gives you more stats if you switch up and wear different types of armor. Honestly, I don't think it's worth to do the 5-1-1. You get a little bit more stats, but you sacrifice a lot of sustained and survivability. So in particular, PvE builds, if I'm a DPS, I wear one type of armor. All light, all medium, if I'm doing DPS. As a tank, five heavy, usually two light, since I like to cast. Uh, healer, all light. PvP gets a little tricky. There I like to do five light, maybe two heavy. Or maybe five medium, two light. Um, it, it just really depends on the build that I'm going for because you need all resource pools uh, in order to survive, especially if you're playing solo. So that's how you got to center your builds around. If you want a little more survivability, throw on some heavy armor, but don't sacrifice that five piece because the five piece is what gives you a big old deuce to your DPS because light armor has spell critical, medium armor has weapon damage, and then heavy has reduced stamina cost. So those five piece passives are why you want to stay five and then maybe two and something else what you use. So that's armor. I know it sounds pretty simple, but let's talk about champion points, which is not so simple. All right, we're in the champion tree here, and this is bread and butter of where you get your regeneration in the green or thief trees. So you have these things right here, and I like to mix them up for PvP. So let's go left to right, the tower. This is probably the strongest of the resource pools. The reason being is reduced cost uh, seems to be better than regeneration. The reduced cost also scales off like stamina. That includes dodge rolling, we reduce cost. So if you're a stamina user, putting a lot of points into this versus regeneration might be more beneficial. It goes back and forth. And a lot of times I just go back and forth on what I think is the most beneficial, but a lot of times it's reduced cost. So I like to spread mine out a little bit. I'm gonna do PVP on this character. So a 4% reduced cost on dodge rolling and using like immovable is huge for my character. Also, reduce magic cost. I'm gonna be casting a lot, so I split these two points up here. Now you'll notice I put 10 extra points in a magician and only got two more percent. So you could even do reduce sprint, you could do a little bashing, you maybe wanna mix it up a little bit. Then I do the same thing over here. A lot of regeneration. So for 20 points, I got 8% here, and then I got 5% on moon calf. Um, so these two things are really, really beneficial. But don't forget the shadow. The shadow has tumbling, reduces the stamina cost of roll dodge and break free. That is huge, especially if you're doing PvP. Also, don't forget the third, the 10, 30, 75, and 120 passes. For instance, if you go over here in the apprentice, let's say you're a magic user and reduces the cost of your next spell by 80% after you drink a potion. So there's all sorts of resource regeneration things snuck into the champion system. Furthermore, if we go into the steed here, block expertise. I love putting 10 points into here as a Dragonite block knight because this 5% adds up quickly when 10 people are beating on you. So this right here is yet another resource regeneration passive that you can take. These in here, not so much. And then over here, you can uh, do some more heavy armor, quick recovery for increased reduced healing, but your bread and butter is gonna come from the thief trees. 
So spend some time investigating this. I respect it all the time based on what I think is working and what's not. So, I mean, tonight if I play and I'm running out a lot of stamina, I might split this in half. Or I might come over here and put a lot more points in a Temwain if I'm getting CC'd and having problems with that. Or put a points in to reduce block cost. Find what works for you. But this is where you put a lot of points in. So a lot of people are trying to repeat my build and they're like, well, I don't have the regeneration that you do. Well, probably because you don't have 200 champion points. And as things work themselves out, I'm gonna be getting a lot more because I do play a lot. So if you don't match up completely, know that I have probably way more champion points. And there's people that have way more than I do. So factor that in before you calculate this build. All right, moving on to the underrated, the underrated side of everything, and that's consumables and their impact on resource regeneration. You guys always hear me hark on potions and their impact and consumables impact and performance, specifically resource management. So as a Dragonite, I have an ability that gives me a major buff. You guys have seen it, Green Dragon's Blood. It gives me increased uh, magicka, or not magicka, bleh, health and stamina regeneration for 23 seconds. So if we look at my stats here, I have a thousand stamina recovery. I pop this sucker. I'm at 1288. Okay, what does that have to do with the potions? Good question, Tommy. This, look at a tripod. Look exactly what this does. It gives me health, uh, stamina, and magic. So if you're a non-Dragonite, if you use this, you get your three major regeneration buffs. You can also pair this up with the minor buffs or a massive 30% increase. Watch this. Remember all those stats? into the 1500s now, and it lasts for 40 seconds. O-M-G-Z. Throw on top of that some drinks that um, increase your three health recovery pools by 300 plus, and you have a nasty regeneration build. So what I like to do is in PVP, get around 20,000 health with the buffs, um, and then use drinks for recovery. Because you're going to have to heal, you're going to have to block, you're going to have to dodge, roll, you're going to have to do all that stuff. And then PvE, what I like, is buy stat food for health and then my main stat. Unless I'm tanking, then I use tri stat food. So I cannot stress to you the importance of using potions. And it's specifically the resources that you want to regenerate. So for me, tri pots, those go 150 a piece. So sucking those down left and right might not be affordable. But if you're a stamina user and don't have your major buff, Think about using these. They do no good in your gold, and they cost seven gold. It's I'd rather use a stamina potion and be able to block for one more minute than lay dead and cause a wipe for my team. Really, really think about using consumables to take your performance to the next stop. So let's talk about one last thing and show you combat and get excited about the next video, which is going to be combat and exactly how I resource manage and fight a bunch of crap where I'm not supposed to win. All right, the intro video, I'm gonna talk you through it here and do it this time um, as my VR4 Templar facing VR13 mobs and explain exactly what I'm doing, which is gonna highlight the next point in the next video, combat, and lead into our third video, which will be making a build on your own. So first thing I'm gonna do is get my buffs up and then I'm gonna YOLO in combat. I want everyone's attention on me and I want them very close. As soon as I see C break, I immediately use a potion. Now I'm holding block until my stamina gets low. Bats, once Bats is up, I know I'm not going to die anytime soon. Bats is down. Everything's about dead, so I'm just going to hold block and play it safe. Not letting my health get below 50. So I'm going to keep up my wards, my shield stacking. Guess what? Stamina's gone, can't block anymore. I just got a shield stack. If I want to survive, I'm going to have to kill something to get stamina back. Shield, just constantly shielding and blocking only when I have stamina. I'm still at 70%. The bosses are getting whittled down. Another boss dead. Or another mob, I should say. We got one more. We're going to get some distance on this guy and burn his little freaking ugly Walma face off. 50% health. Not a big deal. Dodge roll out. I got plenty of stam. Blocking. So I don't get insta-nuked. Get my buffs up, 70% health. Oop, 27. I am in one-shot territory. Block. Bats is up. I'm going to use it just to be safe. Dodge roll to get some space. Burn their face off. So, 
VR Forte seen facing VR 13 mobs, you can do the same sort of thing in PvP. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment with your tips on resource regeneration. And feel free to subscribe if you already haven't.